When you're in the market for a new cell phone, but aren't ready for that two-year commitment, make Yakety Yak Wireless your first stop. Our experienced sales staff will help you choose the phone that's best for you. We carry a vast array of basic and smartphones, and at Yakety Yak, you can try it before you buy it. Looking to save some money? We sell used and unlocked phones and provide the best in iPhone repair. Come into Yakety Yak Wireless for all your mobile phone needs. Okay, today we're going to repair a 3G iPad 2. Um, this one only has a single crack in it, so it should be a fairly quick and easy fix. My other video showed one that had been entirely destroyed. We're going to use the same tools as we did in the other video. We're going to use a can of dust off to keep off dust out of the LCD. We're going to use a triple zero Phillips head screwdriver. We're going to use these metal flat blade spudgers. I found these on eBay. They work wonderful. Uh, as many as you can get. We're also going to use a orange pry stick. We actually use the pry stick for the most part to disconnect the LCD and the digitizer so you're not touching it with metal. We're going to use a variable rate heat gun. If you don't have one of these, set your heat gun to low or your hair dryer to low. Um, you don't want anything hotter than 150 degrees. Around the outside of the iPad is a plastic bezel. You're going to not pry that up. You're going to go between the glass and the bezel, which is why I use a sharp metal spudger to do that. You can also use a razor blade, um, like an X-Acto knife, to just slice around between the glass and the bezel to give yourself a little separation before you get started. Um, on these iPads, there are several areas. The top area on the iPad is for the uh, 3G antennas. The lower left down here is actually going to be the uh, connector antenna. Upper right as you'll see is where the volume and mute switch are. You're not going to go anywhere near those and the bottom right next to the home button is the Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna. Um, you'll see us in the video we're very careful around all of these. We always start in the lower right hand side. The reason I do this is because separating that Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna is the most critical at the beginning and getting that out of the way will help you build your confidence for the rest of the repair. So we're going to use a lot of heat in this in the video, I speed up the heat by about two to four times in a lot of cases. So you'll see it move pretty quick. Um, it should give you an idea of just how much heat we are applying. If the iPad's heavily cracked um, in this area, you can actually just pry the glass up uh, in pieces until you get to a solid uh, chunk and then apply more heat to uh, have it lift in a single piece. If your iPad has bent corners, um, you should watch the other video I have out there, which is just the regular Wi-Fi iPad video, because on that one we had some severely bent corners, and I showed how you can um, help fix that. Okay, so we got the spudger underneath. We're going to go, you see we go over here to the left. We're not going to go too far, because when you get to about an inch and a half to two inches from that home button is where the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna starts in, and you do not want to cut that. Um, now we're going to, we've got it kind of separated down the bottom, now we're going to go up the right side. As you go up the right side, you can go to within a half an inch of the volume button, um, to, the, to the bottom part of the volume button. If you go any higher than that, you will cut a flex cable that controls that volume button and the rotate. Uh, it can be replaced, but it is one of the harder cables to replace on an iPad. Next question is, how far do you stick the spudger in? Um, you can go in pretty far. You'll actually see it come in on the other side of the uh, black or the white trim ring. Um, however, don't go in at an angle. If you're pushing down, you're going to push down on the LCD and you can damage the LCD. So we go in very straight on this. And if we need to lift, we actually kind of angle the spudger and turn it to the side rather than lifting it up and down, which will help us to uh, help break that the uh, adhesive separation. You can see we use the extra spudgers to help keep the iPad screen. It wants to go back down and re-adhere the whole time you're working on this. So use a bunch of spudgers and get in there and just keep it separated. You can see the uh, spudger that we're using is moving pretty easily. It's because we applied a lot of heat. Um, we use gentle, firm pressure. Uh, don't reef on it too much because if you slip, you'll cut something, maybe even yourself. So you can see we're getting up near the uh, volume buttons, and we're not going to get any closer than about a half an inch from the bottom volume button. We'll turn the iPad sideways here, let you see. 
we're doing now is just trying to apply some up and down pressure a little bit um, while we're not in too far to help that separate. This iPad's never been repaired before, so the adhesive on it is very, very strong. Okay, we're getting very close. Now you can see we're about a half an inch from that bottom volume button, and we're not going to go any higher than that. I've seen a bunch of repair videos where you know they get in there with some little uh, guitar pick uh, um, pry bars, and it takes them about three or four minutes, and they just lift it up. If you ever watch one of those videos, that iPad's been repaired at least two or three times, and it's just not really stuck down at all. I, I prefer to use one's customer units that haven't been repaired before to kind of give you a real sense of what it's like to fix one of these things. The iPad is one of the toughest repairs we do at our store. So as you get to this home button and, and where that Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna is, you can see we're only going in with that spudger about a quarter of an inch. We're not going in any further until we actually separate it out. Um, you can damage that Bluetooth Wi-Fi. If you go further in than a quarter of an inch by the home button, you can actually damage the home button too, so don't do that. What we're going to do is we're actually going to lift the iPad up here, and by lifting it up, we can kind of use our fingers to, to pry it apart a little bit and see where that antenna is. As you do this, make sure you don't bump the power button. You do not want to turn the power on on this. Okay, so you can see we've pulled it apart, and what he's doing is he, he can see the antenna, and he's going between the glass and the antenna to actually separate it down. We'll show a close-up here in a second, so that way you can actually see what that antenna looks like. It's a very thin, flexible piece of plastic, and it tears really easily, and once you get a tear in it, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth no longer work. See, he's being very careful and taking his time. Now we're going to zoom in here. Okay, so now you can see that antenna right there, right? What he's pushing down on. He separated away from the glass. And now he's just going to pop a spudger in there to keep it held down right there. Okay, again, remember, only going about a quarter inch by the bottom of the home button, but on the other side of the home button, along the bottom, you're fine. There's no other cables to worry about. The next cable you're going to get to is about an inch and a half to two inches up on the left side, which is the digitizer cable. If you cut that, it's not the end of the world um, because you're replacing it anyways, but it's just good practice not to cut any cables. So you can see we're rounding the corner here, applying gentle pressure to kind of lift up and break it. Now as we move up the left side here, that's when we're going to get to that cable. So we're going to pull the spudger out and not only go in about a quarter of an inch. You can see that where he's not going in too far. He's just working the spudger up and down and kind of twisting it a little bit gently to apply pressure to break that seal. Okay, once you get past this bottom, uh, once you get past the, the flex cable on that connecting the digitizer, the whole rest of the left side of the iPad, remember the iPad's upside down right now, so it's actually the left side, is um, completely clear. You can go all the way up it. While he's doing this, I'm going to talk a little bit about the parts we use. When you go to buy your part on eBay um, or wherever you buy it from, you want to make sure that the adhesive comes with it. It either comes with it or it's attached to it. And if you know you're going to go, you'll see screens anywhere from probably thirty to eighty dollars. Uh, you definitely get what you pay for. Don't buy too cheap a screen. We've seen some really cheap screens come into our shop from customers who bought them, and they just they don't work right. So spend a little more, get a good screen. Okay, now we're going to, we've uh, taken down the whole left side, now we're going to go across the top. Across the top, there are two Wi-Fi, or sorry, 3G antennas. You can tell because of the black banding on the back. If it was just clear, if it was just silver, it would be a Wi-Fi model and you wouldn't have to worry about any of this. These antennas are very fragile. 
they're long rectangular boxes, about a half an inch wide, half an inch deep, and about two and a half inches long. With these uh, boxes, they are, they've got full adhesive on them, and they're stuck to the screen. So if you just lift up on the screen, you're going to tear them. And again, they're no fun to replace. So we've separated all three other sides. Now what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to apply some heat, and we're going to get in there and really work very hard at just separating out the glass from the antenna. The best way to do it is kind of lift the iPad up at an angle and, you know, hold it in your hand and kind of work at it. Make sure, again, you don't bump that power button. Don't turn it on. And so you can use your finger at the top left edge to kind of pull out a little bit. Don't pull out too far. And then you're just going to get in there and you'll be able to see the antenna because, like I said, it's a box. And you just want to get the spudger between the glass and the top of the antenna. There's two of them, one on either side of the front facing camera. The other thing on that front facing camera, it has a metal bracket around it that's adhered to the glass. You won't hurt it um, by pressing on it, but just be aware it's there so you won't be able to stick the spudger in as far in that area. You see how he's just constantly applying pressure with his left hand and with his right hand he's making sure that he gets in there with that uh, spudger and doesn't cut the antenna. If after watching this video you decide that you know, this repair is just not for you, um, we do fix them. You can go up to our website, www.yakitupdfw.com, and uh, we provide free shipping back. We charge $149.95 to repair an iPad 2 digitizer that's broken. Uh, you ship it off to us, we'll fix it and get it back to you within three business days. Um, we put a 90-day warranty on our repair. Okay, so he is getting in here and he's separated the first one, so he's going to use the spudger to hold it separated. He's going to use his fingers to kind of pry at the bottom here. And the whole thing is this adhesive, now that it's hot and tacky, it wants to restick. So using the spudgers as blockers, it kind of keeps that from happening. Okay, you've made it three quarters of the way around the iPad. This last quarter is the most critical part. It is where the other uh, 3G antenna is. It's where the power and earphone jack cable is and where the mute and volume cable is. And so lots of heat and just be really, really careful. So first we're going to work at that other wife, uh, the other 3G antenna. Right there's the camera. Again, you can't go in too far by the camera. We're watching out for that power button, too. Okay, so he's going to use his finger to hold it open and do the exact same thing. The second one's a little easier because you got it's further away, so you got a little bit more leverage on it. So it should separate a little bit quicker. See him prying it open there. And she's going to very carefully get that spudger between the glass and that Wi-Fi antenna. I'm sorry, we slip out of frame a little bit here. We'll pop back in. Like I said, just be really careful of that power button. The reason that we don't cut the digitizer cable is because if you happen to hit the power button right now, you can still use the digitizer to turn the iPad back off. If you've cut that digitizer cable and that power button flips on, um, you stand a risk of shocking the iPad and killing it, which has happened before. Or you have to do the rest of the repair with the power on, which is just never a good thing to do. So you can see us separating away that antenna. You see all the adhesive that's on there. There's a ton of adhesive. Yeah, 
Yeah, so you can see the antenna wants to just lift right out there, and we just keep it in its little hole. Okay, so now we've separated three of the sides. We're down to the last important bit. So now, he's only got that spudger in about a quarter of an inch right now, just to make sure that we don't damage any of the cabling. See how he's lifting it up right there? Get his fingernails underneath it. You can pull the those two cables, the two flex cables up in the upper right, the ones that you don't want to cut, aren't actually adhered to the screen. It's just if you slide the spudger in, you'll cut them. So in this area up here, you just use a bunch of heat and lift the screen off. If the glass is broken and comes off in pieces there, just very carefully use heat and your fingers to pick off each individual piece of glass until you can see those two cables. Okay. So again, he's got that spudger in about an eighth of an inch at this point. And what he's doing is he's just using his hands to provide the pressure to lift that screen off. And he's got it. and it lifts over to the left. The digitizer cable you'll see is in the lower um, left side here. He's making sure that, that Wi-Fi antenna stays where it should be. And here you go. Very clean uh, take apart because the glass is only cracked in one area. So you can see those two antennas up top. Now they're still, they're the black rectangle boxes. And then the, uh, you've also got the cables in the upper right. They're tiny cables. Hang on here, let's zoom in so you can get a good look at them. Wait for the focus to catch up. There we go. You got one right there and one right here. Again, tiny little cables, very exposed. And they just they cut so easily. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take out, you have to take out the, uh, oh, hang on, one other thing we're going to show you. This is that Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna. And you can see <coughs> exactly where it sits in relation to the home button. Okay, now it's time for us to take out the screws. There are uh, four screws, one in each corner. There, Phillips head screw. And then when you remove these, the screen lifts up and to the left, same as the digitizer does. You want to, as you unscrew this, try and avoid getting any fingerprints on the screen. They're very hard to get off. Here comes number three and four. And like I said, the screen then lifts up um, and to the left. Now, as you do this, it, it's in there a little tight, and you don't want to break the LCD because it is fragile. But what we just use is we use a, a orange or a blue pry stick, come in from the right side, and then just get it to release. There it goes. Again, try and keep fingerprints off of it. And now you have to disconnect it. It has a 
a long blade type uh, connector that actually has a little um, hook that holds it in place. And so you use the orange pry tool and you flip up this little piece. And it's just like a retaining bar. And then once you lift it up, it, it pulls out. And I'll show you that retaining bar here. Okay. So now we have to, there's a little cover plate. The digitizer has two um, flex cable attachments. And there's this little bitty cover plate. Sometimes, some people don't remove it. Um, you can remove it. It makes it easier if you do, if you've never repaired it before. It's just two little screws, and you don't even have to lift it out. You can just slide it out of the way. So we're going to unscrew that. And you'll see it just slide out of the way. There it goes. Now you're going to use your orange pry tool to pop up these two flex cables. Just be really careful. This is an area where you can completely blow up your iPad. If you break this piece right here, the digitizer cable will not sit in flush and you can't replace it. So then you're going to be uh, buying yourself a new iPad. So we pop these up carefully. They lift from the bottom towards the top of the iPad and then you pull out the digitizer cable. If you notice on the digitizer cable, it has two dotted white lines that, that should be sitting completely uh, even with the top of the connector, so that way you can tell that it's in all the way. There we go. So we got it out. Now on this digitizer, depending on how your new digitizer is, uh, you may have to remove the top camera piece. On ours, we only have to remove the bottom piece for the uh, home button. Here's a tip for you. If yours came with a replacement home button, throw it away. Use the stock one because the, the aftermarket ones don't work nearly as good. They're just held in with an adhesive. You can lift the pry plate off and then you can pop out the home button as well. One other thing you'll see as we get to it is we actually don't replace these two pieces into the new digitizer. We actually put them back on the iPad which makes it a lot easier to center that screen. Because if you put this on the iPad and you put it in the wrong spot, it won't go in. Okay, here's our new screen. You can see on our screen our adhesive is already applied. Um, and the home button is not there. A couple of things. You notice our adhesive may not look like yours. In the lower left and then up around by the where the camera goes, you see we have put two extra pieces of adhesive. I think the way the screens come with the adhesive, there's not enough adhesive on there, so we actually apply more to make it stick better. Okay, we're going to um, put the digitizer cable in, and it slides into those those two connectors all the way down until those white arrows are, or the white lines are both even. You can see those white lines right there. They should be both against the bottom of the connector. And then we use our finger just to flip those two down. And then from here, we're going to reapply that little metal piece that we disconnected. One thing before we do that, notice the, the digitizer cable actually tucks up underneath the base of the iPad. Uh, there's a channel under there, and you push it in as far as it can go. Um, as you lay down the digitizer, you're actually going to come in at about a 20 degree angle and, and try and push it further into that channel because if that cable gets um, caught up in the adhesive, uh, the digitizer in the lower left will not sit flush. Okay, so now we're going to go and center this little metal piece here and then screw it back on. Okay. Now after this, one of the things we have here is that, you know, because this came off in one piece, there really wasn't any cleaning that we had to do. 
uh, broken glass or extra glue. Um, if your if your uh, digitizer is badly broken, you have to get all that excess glass and glue and everything else around the edges. We didn't have to do it on this one. Now we're putting the LCD in. This connector here slides in, and then that little metal clip clips down. You'll know it's incorrectly. Be careful with this connector. Those pins are fairly fragile. You want to make sure you get it centered in exactly right. It should go in completely flush, and then you take the metal clip here. You can see we're getting it in. Notice we're not touching it with any metal tools. And now you can see this little clip folds over and clips down. And if it clips down, everything's good. And then we're going to put the LCD down and LCD sits into its own little channel. You can't put it in incorrectly. Make sure it sits down in there flush. Should be a fairly snug fit. We're going to screw it back on. Again, same four screws. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to place the home button piece right down there. So it sits in that little channel. It only goes in one way. See that? Getting it placed in there. And then the home button sits on top of it. You can actually take that home button piece and put it into the digitizer if you want. Uh, that'll work either way, but the metal support should definitely go around it. Now you notice we're actually turning it on. We're doing this to test this digitizer before we go any further. Um, it really sucks to pull off all the adhesive, get everything put together, and find out that you have a dead spot in your digitizer. So we're just gently laying it on top. And all we're going to do here is just make sure that everything in the digitizer works, that it doesn't have any dead spots, um, that you can take something and move it all around and it doesn't the best way to do it is to tra grab an icon like we're doing here and move it all the way around if there's a dead spot the icon will release and uh, go back to its original spot we're checking the home button make sure everything's kind of seated down right Okay, now we're going to power this thing off. So that was one very important tip that a lot of people forget. The other important tip, and you notice that we're taking off the protective covers off the screen before the adhesive. We take it off front and back. The reason we do this is that sometimes these screens will ship with some fingerprints from the person who made it in China. And we don't like fingerprints. And so what we're going to do is we're going to peel off both sets of the, of the covers over the screen and then look at the screen with light on it against a black background. It will highlight any imperfections in the screen, any fingerprints or smudges, and we will then wipe those off. The best way to wipe them off is with just a microfiber cloth um, this one is actually in remarkably good shape. It's very unusual. Okay, so now that we have that, the next step is going to be um, to use a pair of tweezers and pull off, very gently pull off the coverings of all the adhesive. If you slip with these tweezers, you're going to gouge the black or white paint underneath. And if you gouge the white or black paint when you lay the digitizer down, you'll see that little nick. So we're very careful with this. We also notice, try not to touch anything other than what we're doing. It's kind of like the game of operation when you were a kid. Okay, now we have all the adhesive off of here. One last squirt with the air to make sure that any roving dust particles are gone. Okay, 
So now, the way this digitizer lays down is at about a 20 degree angle. See what we're taking the spudger here first and we're kind of pushing down on this digitizer cable to tuck it into that channel. Because you don't want to lay the digitizer cable between the adhesive and the side of the iPad. So we're coming in from a 20 degree angle and kind of sliding it in. You'll feel when it goes in right and that lower left corner is the first thing you should lay down. Once you do that, then it's just a matter of getting everything centered. Because that home button is sitting down on the uh, actual iPad, we use our finger to kind of push it around, make sure it's centered, and move it around before we press down. You just want to make sure you have good action on that home button and it clicks freely. From here, we're going to go and just press it all in. One thing that our shop does is that um, after we repair an iPad like this and we put it all together, we actually lay it face down on a thin piece of carpeted surface and put some heavy weights on top of it. And we'll do that for about 24 hours to get it to really bond well so that way the adhesive doesn't lift. The final thing that we do is we test it. Everything's connected. We're going to test the home button. Um, things that you should test, you should make sure that the volume buttons work, the mute button works, power button, home button, that Wi-Fi still works, 3G still works, um, you know, so that way you didn't damage anything in the uh, process. Hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, Yakety Yak Wireless does this for demonstration purposes only. Uh, we don't recommend that you do this. Doing this will void your warranty. Uh, if you have broken your iPad and need it repaired, Yakety Yak Wireless repairs iPads, iPods, iPhones, as well as HTC, LG, and Samsung phones. Um, you can find us on the web at yakitupdfw.com, and you can actually place your order online. Thanks for watching the video today, and uh, we appreciate the attention.